Murals have always been around. Since the caves in France, the Sistine Chapel, murals have always been around. The reason that it resonates so much with Latinos is because of the things that were happening in Mexico City with Diego Rivera and all them in that era. They were leveraging muralism not just for the art form, but for political reasons. You gotta realize that the masses were largely uneducated and couldn't read. So this was a way to communicate what was going on in the country politically to the masses. Art was never a choice, art was the family business. My dad's a painter, sign painter by trade. He's been painting signs in San Salvador, Ciudad Delgado. Like, he started painting when he was 11. He would do people's uh, cards for Dia de los Muertos. And you know, they got paid like 10 cents a card, but my dad made 20 cents a card because he did old, like old English. So it was never really an option. It was, it, was, it was in my blood, it was in my genes, and it was the family business. He would paint a sign, he'd finish, but there's leftover paint, your brushes are out and there's an alley, and it's ugly, and there's graffiti. And it's like, well, let me clean this up and paint something that I want to paint. So my dad would paint things that range from Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden in Santa Hats to, you know, Thalia. So it would be like pop art, it would be funny, it would be a political statement. And I saw that, and not only that, I saw the difference it made in the communities in which he painted. And I saw the way that people were affected. People would come out and hold his hands and pray over the walls. There's ways of putting messages out there, even controversial messages, without putting up blight or ruining or vandalism or, or doing something negative in your community. You can achieve the same message with something beautiful. A lot of murals really inspire me and inspired me growing up. One was Steve McQueen by Kent Twitchell. It's in Pico Union where I grew up, so I would often see it driving home and it would baffle me. How did he get it to look that real? It looks like a photo, how did he do it, right? And it would inspire me because, you know, I wasn't that good technically. And so seeing somebody that's that good technically pushes you to get there. And another mural that was big was We Are Not a Minority with Che Guevara over in Boyle Heights. I think uh, those two kind of sum up, you know, what I'm all about. It's, it's, it's all about improving our neighborhoods, representing ourselves, and doing it so in a way that is beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, and is welcomed by communities and improves the aesthetic of our communities. I was really proud of the Mona Lisa. I don't always go out there and put out political statements, but the, Mo the Mona Lisa was basically a big finger saying, we're gonna paint. From 2001 to 2012, I believe, uh, I could be wrong, it was illegal to paint murals in Los Angeles. But over a decade, the moratorium prevented large-scale imagery from going up on walls. And I thought that was wrong. And I thought what we were doing was a good thing. And I painted the Mona Lisa because she represents the art, she represents the artist, and she's got a rifle at her back and a sword in hand, and a big old sombrero just like you know, the Adelitas of the Mexican Revolutionary War, it was a fight and she represents the artists fighting for the arts and that's what we were doing in Pacoima. We were painting murals dozens at a time, at a time when it was illegal to paint murals in Los Angeles because we believed in it. And the Mona Lisa represents that. To start off, I wanted to represent Latino people and Latino communities. I was painting a lot of celebrities, I was painting a lot of well-known people. In time, I turned around and started painting well-known works of art, but I would put a Latino twist on them. Uh, the girl with the pearl earring, I turned into the girl with the hoop earring. You know, pearls were very popular at the time. That's the reason why she's wearing a pearl, and that's the reason why it's in that painting. In my neighborhood, it was all about the hoops. So I found a way to kind of segue our community into that piece of art. I can't fly all of Pacoima out to see the painting, but I can steal the painting and bring it to Pacoima. So after that, I started painting a lot of locals. I realized that, you know, uplifting celebrities, I could uplift everyday people, right? Why not? And so now I try and paint not just celebrities, but people who also represent our culture in a positive way, be it somebody's grandmother, be it, you know, a hardworking person, another artist, whatever it may be, we try and represent our community with our art. I rediscovered Nipsey Hussle through the tragedy that occurred. I was always familiar with his music, but through his passing, I discovered all his work in his community, and his philosophy is so on point. I think, you know, do what you can for your community today. Go out there, be an entrepreneur, do it for yourself, and improve your community. Invest in your own community. I want to echo Nipsey's legacy. I want to 
make sure that that message continues on. So I was very inspired and I went out and painted a mural the next day and uh, you know I hope people enjoy it and I hope it again carries his legacy further than, than his life did. As soon as I'm done with the mural it's no longer mine. It belongs to the community and I welcome the community to use it. Personally I don't believe you need permission to do something right which is why I've never gone through a 60-day process to put up a mural. If that was the case we'd still be waiting for Nifty's mural. You don't need permission to go out and do something right. All of my work, the vast majority of it, is illegal. Meaning I didn't go through the city to register my mural before putting it up. Why did I do that? Because I believe in it. I believe that what we're doing is right. I believe that what we do improves the communities. I believe that what we do improves the aesthetic of our communities. And I believe that the communities in which I do it welcome it. So I don't think I need to go through the city. And to this day, none of my murals have been erased. None of them have been an issue with the city. In fact, the city has turned around and <laughs> awarded all the people that you know, we work with and, and, and it's been you know, embraced. With a gallery, you tend to be interested in the artist or the theme or the gallery or whatever it may be, and it caters only to a certain segment of the population. What I love about murals is that, again, it's there for everybody to take in and everybody to absorb. It's a beautiful thing.